welcome to the Car Sim and Race Driver Show, presented by Hugh Hattrick. We're at Bathurst in the course of my very special guest, basically, Rascal Rabbit, Josh Martin. It's great to have you back on the show. Try fast and try not to crash. Hello and welcome to the Car Sim and Race Driver Show with me, Hugh Hattrick, and my very special guest who has jumped on at the last minute as an absolute hero to stand in for poor old Gaz Sims. It is Mikolai, or his PSN name is Mew Mew 79 How are you doing, Mikolai? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. That's great. Now, just for everyone who's watching, um, you probably would be expecting Gaz tonight, but unfortunately, poor thing, he had to go into hospital um, because he has a, quite a, a difficult medical situation there. Um, and he told me today, unfortunately, that he had to go into hospital overnight. So our thoughts and prayers are with Gaz. Um, and we hope to have him back on as soon as we can. He should be out in the next wee while. So we'll keep you up to date. So we do apologise that Gas isn't available tonight, but we've got Mikolai, who has very kindly stood in um, for an Hello. interview. Uh, now, you, I believe, are an admin for Basic Ollie's channel. Yes, that is true. That is so true. How, did all, how did all that start then? How did you become a fan of Ollie and uh, uh, along with your YouTube channel? How, how, did you, how did you manage to become an admin for Ollie, first of all? Well, firstly, I had a race with him at Monza about nine months ago. And mm -hmm. it was a great race. And then I saw at the end of the race that he had a YouTube channel. So I searched it up and turned out he made Gran Turismo videos. So I subscribed and then obviously we know what happened there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, his, his channel has grown uh, massively over the last wee while, uh, especially when he was racing Super GT. And of course, Super GT oh. called him out and recommended his channel. And of course, it's gone up from, because I interviewed him when he had about two and a half thousand subs, and now he's up to over 15,000, uh, which is fantastic and, and well deserved. He's done. Is it yeah, up to sixteen thousand now? My goodness, yeah, it's growing. It's growing really, really well. So, of course, you have started your own YouTube channel. Um, and uh, so, what what was the thing that led you to do that? I don't know. I just felt like making videos. Really, uh, I, 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 the problem was though was that after a while, I just kind of lost motivation. So, I'm really at a point I shouldn't be really because if I'm honest, I could be. A lot bigger at this at this stage but obviously it's not ha quite happened yet yeah well i think it's like anything isn't it growing a youtube channel um takes it, its it, time the first stage is very difficult it, it, getting to 100 subscribers is by far the hardest bit for sure yeah certainly it's quite interesting i mean we we decided to restart our kind of channel back in in August, so we had areas, you know, kind of Rory Alexander. You've probably seen him on yeah, on YouTube, yeah. um, and he very kindly came on. Um, and we've had a few other uh, very you know, special guests over the years, uh, but I thought, right, let's try and um, uh, kind of make a, 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 a try and stand out with our channel. And I think that's sometimes what you have to try and do. And so Rory came on, and with his community, and um, that really helped us to galvanise and got you know get a lot more subscribers. And it certainly gave us a lot of motivation. And here we are with over 277 subscribe, the subscribers at this time, which is absolutely amazing. So as you say, it just takes a bit of time um, and you'll see things grow. Now, I've been looking at your channel um, earlier on today and I see that you do lap guides. Um, how, how do you manage to do that? What was the motivation and things to lead you to do a, a lap guide? Uh, that, that was only one video, I think, because I felt as though I set a decent-ish lap time, but when Willow Springs Group 3 returns, I'll probably try to get a decent lap and then upload it onto YouTube for people to try and get a decent lap as well. Yeah, yeah. And have you have you found that your, your lap times are pretty competitive? What's been your, how do you manage to get the, the really fast times when you do a lap uh, on Grand just kind, of, just kind of keep going at it. You know, the more you play, the more that you obviously improve. But, you know, you can definitely pick up tips along the way. That, that's what kind of helped me as well. Just by watching other people, I picked up what lines they were taking, where they were braking, what brake bias they were using, what car, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that really helped me kind of get to A plus. That's fantastic. A plus at 
age 14, my goodness me, I'm jealous already. <laughs> it's taken me years to try and get to B and S, and I only just managed to get into A um, a little while ago. Um, but no, that's that's really, really good. Now, we've had a question from Gaz, who is oh, must be watching this from his hospital bed. Uh -huh. He says, who... <laughs> He says, who is your favourite admin? Uh, favourite admin? Hmm. I mean, it's, it's got to be Gaz, hasn't it? I mean, come on. has to be Gaz. <laughs> now, My there's another question. Another question is, what actually does a moderator do or an admin do on a channel? Just kind of keep everything flung smoothly in a, in a live stream because... If, there, if there's like 506 people watching, chances are there's going to be some idiot in the chat. So you've got to make sure that there are no idiots trying to ruin it. And so it, there aren't many idiots, thankfully, on Ollie's channel compared to some others. I'm mm -hmm. sure you'll probably um, know whose channel has a bit of a problem with haters. But to be honest, it's not that difficult. I mean, most of the time I watch the stream just for a laugh and I get a laugh, so I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. I suppose it's, um, I mean, I haven't, to be fair, when I've been watching uh, live streams, I know there, was, there seemed to be a point a wee while ago when there was a lot of spam and people would come on with, with, with their messages that weren't appropriate, um, but they, either they had swear words or whatever in them, um, but they're very quickly deleted. So I take it that's one of your roles. If somebody puts on a dodgy, a dodgy comment, you can remove it straight away and uh, things like that. Yeah, that, that's what we kind of have to do, really. Just make sure that there's, you know, kind of bad words in the chat and something that could offend someone, for example. And we've got to make sure that everything is in English as well, otherwise it can get a bit of a, could get a bit confusing because someone could be saying stuff in another language that we don't understand. Yeah. Yeah, how do you, how do you deal with that then? Is there a kind of translation that you can put in? Is it, there's no ways to translate it, I suppose, is there? I mean, right. translation... But the problem with translating it, though, is that it it takes a little, about... It, it does take a little while, and by the time the a moderator's translated it, I could have said something else, and then it's just going to be a continuous loop. So just yeah, got to make sure everything's in English so we can understand it all. Yeah, yeah. So what's what's your your sim rig setup then, or do you play on the on the gaming pad, um, or do you have do you have um, special equipment? I play on this. I play on the. Ah, fantastic! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good because to get the good times on a controller, that is hard. That is really hard. Yeah, it, I mean, it, that... it is tricky, especially with tire wear and uh, real wheel drive cars. It's very tricky to manage, but I think I've done relatively well. Yeah, no, I'm going to get to A plus. You must have done extremely well, because um, I remember that's one of the main reasons why I got a sim rig is because I was so frustrated using the pad. I thought I just can't seem to get anywhere near the quick guys, and so I, you know, my first thought was get a better sim rig. You know, let's let's use what they're yeah. using or something similar, um, and that's kind of how how it all goes from there. But no, if you're doing on a pad, that would be fantastic. You'll certainly have to save up the pennies and uh, do all the paper rounds that you can do, or whatever it might be, so you can save up and get a sim rig. Because if you're that fast on a pad, you'll be, I'm sure, super fast uh, on a sim rig as well. Now we've got a question from one of the one of the people in the in the comments from Nailinski, and he says, "What is your favourite track and car combination?" Oh, that, 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 that's that's just that's just that's easy. Willow Springs Group Three. If you're in Ollie's Discord, you know. <laughs> so and how do you? Because sorry. Because it's, it's such a such an old school track and in group three because obviously it's got a bit more it's obviously faster than group four it just feels more satisfying really to get a lap mm -hmm. and what is it about willow springs because it's a very interesting circuit isn't it it's quite different to anything else with all those I mean, it's very easy if you get caught in the dust and you go out for miles and miles isn't it it's uh do you find that a particular challenge is that what kind of motivates you to race around there uh, it's a challenge yeah because but when I'm racing there, I know that I can't go 100%. I have to go 95 or 90% because I know if I push the limits too much, then I'll be gone for weeks and then it's going to be impossible to get back on the track. 
And that's a yeah. lot of people. That's what a lot of people uh, make a mistake on. They try and push too much at Willow, but because it's such a old school track, there's literally no tarmac runoff. So you've got to be so careful Aye. to make Aye. sure you don't go off the track. What's your key to the last corner? Because I always find that really tricky. Um, that last corner, isn't it? Because it's you're kind of on that right hand bend. And then it kind of tightens a little bit. And if you brake too hard, you can really unsettle the car. And if you change down, you can yeah. unsettle the car. What would you recommend? Just stick to the inside, really. It's the fastest line. But I used, I used to go to the outside, but then I realised that all the top guys were just sticking to the inside and getting a, uh, a much better run through the last quarter. And when it was an FIA race about seven months ago, I could. I was definitely up there with some of the quickest guys. I beat, I believe, PR one fire in the time trial. Wow. Um, that was still wow. a tenth in it because on my best lap I completely messed up the final corner, and I, kn I knew that I could go quicker. But eventually in the race, uh, I got screwed over because I started on pole, and then for some reason I decided to start on the medium, so I had to fight my way through. And I was a dirty driver by the name of Vicky, who was just pushing everyone off the track. And unfortunately, he ruined my race. I could, that could have been my only Manufacturer Series win, yeah. which is a shame. It is um, tough, isn't it? My is so high now, it's going to be very tricky to win, especially against you know split three drivers. They're very fast, so it's going to be tricky. Yeah, and we've got a good question from, uh, I'll try and pronounce this correctly, um, Aiko Hendricks, I think that is the name. Mm -hmm. um, who is your who is your biggest inspiration for your channel? Uh, biggest inspiration? Uh, I mean, pretty much every single GT Sport YouTuber's inspiration is Super GT. I mean, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. he, he, he's the biggest channel. He's got almost 500,000 subscribers and he's the only person who makes GT videos that can go anywhere near 100,000 views on a regular basis so I guess he yeah. has to be my inspiration really but I also yeah, got he's... a bit of inspiration from Ollie as well because he mm. kind of inspired me to get back into uploading so that was good mm. as well yeah, I mean, how do you find, obviously, you're at school, and I know at the moment every, the schools are closed, um, but last year they weren't um, up until a point. Um, how have you found kind of doing all your schoolwork and then being able to game as well? Do you find it's giving you a bit of extra street cred when you talk to your mates and say, look, I'm on the time top 10 in the time trial on GT Sport, and you've beaten all these guys? It must surely give you a bit of street cred saying things like that. Uh, it doesn't really. and I mean, the schoolwork is easy to manage because... It's obviously over kind of between nine o'clock and three o'clock. And then I've got the rest of the, the evening or the afternoon rather to play Grand Turismo. But I haven't been playing this week. I just haven't touched the game. I just, just the daily races have a bit good and with no FIA to practice for, it's just no point really. Yeah. I need to get back into PC as well. I haven't played it for well over a week. So I need to get mm. back into it. Yeah. Oh, that's the thing. Now, we've got a question um, uh, from, it is uh, 110 PC11. I have no idea who that is, but uh, there's a great question that you've got. It says, um, how long do you spend practicing to be as competitive as you are? How long do I spend practicing? Uh, depends what he means. If it's for FIA, it's about five minutes, 10 10 minutes before a race I don't do a practice lobby there's just there's no point because I could just watch maybe key 25 stream and know what the strategy is within 30 seconds so I don't mm. see the point but obviously That's... I should, probably should now that I'm in a higher lobby because next season I'm planning to go with Jaguar or Honda really or maybe McLaren as well so I'm only familiar with the Honda, so I need to bit, do a bit more practice to try and get to grips with the car for the track and stuff. So I probably should do more practice, but at the moment, not much. 
Yeah. No, that's uh, that's amazing that you can do those kind of times, and it's and it's hardly any hassle. It's, it's uh, done so quickly, which is very very good. Now we've got a question from Mike Rogers Racing. Um, what does Mumu want to do when he leaves school? So there you are. What would be your ideal? Oh, what does Mumu want to do when he leaves school? Uh, probably uh, be a car designer, but that's obviously going to be very tricky because you've got to get all these degrees and stuff. But, I mean, that's obviously my ultimate dream, but I'm going to try and have to work towards it, really, and... For now, anyway, YouTube is just a side thing, really. I was going to say, we have, we have a very special guest in the chat tonight. We've got Ollie. Ollie has turned up. So do you have, do you have any questions for Ollie as well? I'll see if he, if, he, if he says anything in the chat, too. What would be a question that you could have for Ollie? Uh, is it hard being the most basic YouTuber on GT Sport? Is it hard? <laughs> oh, well, we'll look out for that. Hopefully, Ollie will answer us in a few seconds there. That uh, which is the thing. That um, but yeah, no. Here we here we go. Um, <laughs> and oh, yeah, I've been told that yes, Ollie is here, and now he's faster than you. <laughs> I did a very funny video only because on Monday night I was doing the group four um, at Magiori, and somebody had told me when we got into the lobby that I saw Ollie's uh, name, and he was starting off tenth, and I was starting off fifth. Um, and I thought, oh my goodness me, this is going to be embarrassing. Um, he's going to come past me. And then somebody said, no, he's in the Alpha 4C. And I thought, well, I might have a chance. Um, and sure enough, I managed to keep ahead of him and I've ended up finishing third. So on that video, I had to put, I beat Basic Ollie. It was my only chance I'd ever get um, to beat him. So that was, that was the thing. I think he gave me a head start. Uh, but no, he's very, very fast, just like yourself. Um, and he's got a great he, channel there. He's very, probably quicker than myself, actually. Because most of the time I have to spend almost all week just to try and beat his times that he's set on Monday. So he is definitely very quick. Yeah. Now, here's a question from Jonathan Sutherland, one of my co-hosts there. Um, do you like go-karting? Um, and is it something that you do every so often or is it something you do quite a lot? Uh, I haven't been go-karting actually for quite a long time. It's something I should really get into, but uh, at the moment with everything going on, it's quite hard to to go go karting so and plus it's also there's not really many tracks near me that do events so mm -hmm. it's a bit of a hassle driving three hours to track and then driving back so that's the whole day basically gone whereas a lot of people it's just like a five minute drive to the track so yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's Aye, quite that's... it's quite difficult where, where are you based about? Where about uh, where would be your nearest track? To be honest, the ne the nearest like per like the nearest track that hosts like events and stuff like karting championships is probably like uh, Wilton Mill, and even though not so hundred twenty five miles away, so it, it's it's quite a distance. Yeah, so what part of the country are you in? Uh, Lancashire, uh, near Blackpool. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you've got yeah, you've got places like that. And I'm just trying to think: is it um, is it Ulton Park? That's down near Man. That's that's the other side of Manchester, isn't it? And places like that. That's not too far away. But um, but as you say, it's great that you're getting into the sim racing and that you've got this uh, good link with Ollie. Um, he's, he's just saying there in the comments that he enjoys seeing people making videos about trying to beat him. Um, so at least we haven't we haven't annoyed him too I'm much so in far. I've been in the Z4. Ah. <laughs> ah, that's the thing you need, need to keep telling him that, and I'm sure he'll, he'll <laughs> that will that will wind him up. Um, okay. On YouTube, on YouTube, check it out. That's the thing, isn't it? <laughs> well, no, it's great the fact that you can play these lobbies as, as many of us do, and we get a chance to play each other and have a and have a laugh. And if we win, we win. You know, it's 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 really good for. Um, for practice and to, to gain the skills, isn't it? And that kind of thing. Now, you said a little bit earlier, you were keen in, into going into car design, um, which is brilliant because, I mean, it's a, it's a great field to go into. Um, and uh, if you design a car eventually, you know, that's you've got your name on it and you can say over to your, you know, when you're older, I designed this great car. Um, is there a particular type of car you would like to design? Uh, sports cars or uh, 
race cars really yeah or race cars aye that's the thing and is there a is there a particular make that you would quite like if there was a manufacturer watching tonight saying we're looking for designers who would you like to work for who would be your favorite probably mclaren actually and i know it sounds stupid but mclaren is just it's probably the most technologically advanced uh car manufacturer because their cars are so complex and it'd be great to work alongside like people who understand these technologies yeah yeah that uh now ollie ollie has replied saying that maybe you could work for minardi <laughs> which was the old formula one team that went bust a number of years ago and was bought was bought over but uh <laughs> no, i'm sure it was great that you've got a, a good you know if you want to do design that's fantastic and i'm not sure what kind of you'll need probably is it graphic design at school that you'll need to do isn't it or things like that to kind of get into all of that um, or the kind of or was it technical drawing things like that yeah. you might need some kind of that that kind of form of being able to to go in but uh so is that something you're quite good at do you have a kind of natural talent as well for drawing and for that kind of car design have you done any practice shots I've, I've before done couple, i've done a couple of designs but i haven't really gone into kind of the the actual inside i've only done like the exterior yeah well, i think i've yeah. done some okay designs yeah yeah but nothing too oh, special yeah now, I mean, that's great because that's that's what many of us have had as kind of boyhood dreams to to go out there and design a car. And I was I was terrible at drawing, so my cars didn't even look like cars. Um, but uh, but no, the fact you've got that motivation to go out there and draw some great sports cars is a, is a fantastic thing. And you need to take hold of that and push it as far as you can. And I'm sure you'll go well. But um, in terms of your your sim career, where would you like that to go? What would be your kind of ideal? And how would you like to see it progress? Uh, my ultimate aim really is to try and get to a world tour, but it's going to be super, super, super difficult because I've got I've got to put in the practice and my focus really is to try and get in a world tour for GT7 because mm -hmm. GT7 is when I'm going to properly start, you know, trying to compete at the top. Yeah, yeah. So that's well, we've got aim. super. Yeah. Well, we've had a few guys who have been on the, the World Tours. Um, we've got Super GT, who's on next week. We've had Tijani as well, who's been doing World Tours for quite a while now. Um, so he's he's been on before. Um, so it's it's probably worth having a little look at some of our interviews there because you can probably find some of the tips from these guys as to how to, to, to get onto them and how they manage to do so well. But, um, so what would you think? What do you think you're going to need to do to get onto those grand, you know, to get onto those grand tours? Because it's it's a big um challenge isn't it and, and uh, obviously you've got to get the time trial right you've got to get up there get the results is there a particular uh you're going to enter this top splits isn't it is that what you're aiming for as well yeah top split is obviously the ultimate goal because you can't get to a world tour without being in the top split the most points because there's a massive difference between second split and top split with second split mm -hmm. you're looking at 320 maybe 325 points for first but then in top split you're looking at well over 350 points upwards of 400 sometimes so you've got to make sure that you've you put in those performances mm -hmm. and what would you say to obviously a lot of our um, community is much much older to be polite um, than your good self um, what would you say are the tips that you could give us um, as to improve our racing um, and our ability to, to do well in sim racing what would be the your top your top say three uh, tips for going faster uh, when we're doing sim racing uh, the first one has to be just to find your limits because you're not going to get anywhere if you don't make mistakes it's, it's just it's just a fact really and also try and see what the top guys are doing because you could definitely pick up a trick or two by just looking at the times and then obviously uh because I, I recall on Monday, I used a top 10 time and immediately I got my time down from a 2.025 to a 2.02 dead in about three laps. So it, wow. if, you, if you can use something to work towards, then it should really help you improve your lap time. So if you set yourself a, a goal like, okay, I want to get under a 2.04, for example, then just kind of set yourself that goal 
just keep going because eventually you'll get it if you you know nail the lap or you don't make any mistakes you will get that lap time eventually mm -hmm. well and what would you say has been like say the biggest trick or the biggest kind of surprise that you found in trying to go faster so maybe by watching one of the videos of someone who's in the top 10 um you know something that maybe surprised you as to how much how much of an influence it was to help you go faster um, around a particular track uh it's probably the gearing actually because uh I, I noticed that before i looked at the time i used i was going in first gear at the first corner and obviously you'll get a lot of wheel spin but then i watched mm. the time and he was taking the first corner and third gear and then I picked that up and I was gaining probably a tenth in the first sector. It really helped me. That's pretty good going, actually, isn't it? Now, here's a completely different question from Sean. Uh, Sean claimed that he's 12, 12 years old, but I don't think that's the case. I wouldn't believe that. No. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but Sean asks, is there any racing heritage in your family or is it something you've just come across and found a love for? Um, my dad's into racing, but there isn't like any motorsport kind of heritage or whatever just just my dad really yeah just racing away now that's that's really really good and so other than gt sport do you have other games that you like to play uh obviously i need to get into a set of course some more because i haven't played it enough really i need to try and improve because i know that I could probably uh, I could probably go a lot faster if I just play a little bit every single day or every other day or whatever. But I used to play the F1 games, but after 2019 with the uh, with the physics, I just didn't like them. So that kind of put mm -hmm. me off most of the F1 games. Really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are a bit strange. I, I used to enjoy playing the earlier ones, actually, from about 2010. So when you had the, the V8s and the V10s, you know, they were just... The sound was so much better that, that I find the sound on the current ones. It's, it's okay, but it's nowhere near as in, as involving yeah, um, cool. as the old as the older cars, aren't they? And that's the thing. But um, now, uh, Ollie has asked here: um, Does your hair create drag and then make you slower in a straight move? That's what he's saying. Uh, no, it doesn't create drag. Actually, <laughs> uh, what does create drag is the fact that I have to carry so much pressure because if you're right behind me, I know that if if you're live streaming or you're recording or whatever, then if I if I spin, then it's on YouTube forever. And then yeah. That's, and that's probably the thing. losing me a good three or four tenths on the straight and then probably another second in the corners. <laughs> now we've got a completely different question. From Nielinski. Now he's saying um, pasties or pies? A food related question. What do you prefer? Oh, pies for sure. Pies. Nothing can beat a good old apple pie from the cup. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> That's it. Ah, yes. Yeah, so we, do, we do great Scotch pies where I am in, in the Scotch borders. Nothing like a Scotch pie. Uh, I mean, especially if you get lamb in it. Lamb Scotch pies are incredible. Uh, but that's the thing. Now, uh, um, a, a political mind has asked. Um, what would be the car that you would like to drive? Or it's kind of like your dream car. Um, and Jonathan jokingly says, my dream car at 14 was a Rover 214. I'm sure you've got bigger expectations than that. Uh, and a sex type car. car. It's, just, it's, just such an, it's just such an icon of Japanese uh, sports cars. So that's, that's what I would like to have. The NSX. Yeah, and what a what a great car. Especially, I mean, it's it's heritage. I mean, it was tested by the late great Ayrton Senna, and you can't really get much better than that. Um, it's, if ever you want to watch a great video, it's on YouTube, and it, it's uh, if you go to it, Senna drives the NSX at uh, Suzuka, and he's got the you'll just see his, he gets into the car, and he's got one camera on his on himself you know, driving normally, and then he's also got a foot cam, and he's wearing these lovely slip-on shoes with the white socks as we used to wear back in the late 80s and 90s. Uh, but you see him do the heel and toe and racing around Suzuka like nothing else. And it's just fantastic. But uh, yeah, the, the, the NSX, and, the, and especially the new one now, is, is quite a machine. Um, is, there, is, there, is there a particular reason why you would choose that car? Uh, it's, it's because I like the NSX, really. 
but if I if, if, because it is quite expensive, uh, if I won't be able to afford, it, I'll just get an EK Type R. Really. Uh, sorry, I didn't quite catch that. The last one that you said. An E Type. EK Type R. All ah, right, all ah, right. Oh, that sounds like quite a machine. That um, now we've got a question here from it is from Gaz. Uh, as Moo is way too young to have played the original Gran Turismo, um, what was the first GT game that you played? GT5 was the first one I played, and then I played GT6, and then obviously playing GT Sport now. But GT6 was the first uh, Gran Turismo game that I really got into. Uh, I, would, I would spend hours trying to get gold out monza in the in the lotus for the edson center dlc so oh yeah 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 and that was a hard one to try and achieve that uh oh, yeah that's... the first chicane at that track was very weird because it's like a double chicane i know it is now we've got a question from mohammed uh, gts and he's saying a question for both you and Moo. Uh, uh, what got you into content creating what got me into content creator was probably uh, because I, I got into GT Sport about towards the end of last year. And at the, by, at, the, at the time I made my first video, I was kind of getting to the point where I knew I, I could probably get to the higher levels. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, uh, why not make a video out of it? And then I, I did a, I did a, a video at race eight which was at tokyo on the toyota 86 and it, it wasn't great it could have been far far better but obviously your first video isn't going to be absolutely spectacular is it so it's going to be tricky but uh, over time I, I improved and i improved on everything really i tried to make the videos as good as possible and really i think the only thing holding me back really is my uh my hardware because I can't upload in anything above 720p unfortunately. Ah uh, right, yeah, yeah, no, that's the thing. Well I remember one of my first live streams, um, it had me, well it had my picture of my steering wheel, um, but I wasn't in it because I forgot I'd actually started it. I was so busy trying to put it out and get it sorted on my computer um, that I realised that for about five minutes nothing was happening and there were people watching and sending messages um, and then I realised I wasn't even on the live stream that I'd put on so but amazingly about 40 people watched it um, and I thought that was that shows some commitment from the community to watch a live stream when I'm not even there uh, an empty seat um but uh, but yeah no it's, it's quite funny isn't it sometimes the mistakes you can make in the first few but then you can quite quickly improve them and try and get on so what, what are kind of your favorite videos to make uh probably the FIA videos because the FIA races are the most enjoyable I think because all the good drivers come out so there's obviously a lot of clean racing most of the time uh, about 95 percent of the races i do uh, make their way onto youtube but obviously the only reason i don't upload fia videos is either because i would i don't think it would be a good video or because i did very badly in it so yeah yeah, that's uh, that's sometimes I have a problem with that too. If I don't do well enough in a race, um, sometimes I'll put them on if there's just loads of penalties and they're kind of full of action. But if they do really badly, I do think I don't think people are going to want to watch this. They want to see people kind of do a bit better. You would you would assume, uh, yeah. but uh, but sometimes it can be quite funny if they if it all goes horribly wrong uh, and that kind of thing. Now we did have Thea in the chat as well. Thea, the Amazont. Um, I don't know if you are you aware of, of Thea. Have you ever watched her channel? Um, uh, she's uh, one of the one of the top female racers out there in the UK um, and she does like the all-female racing league and things like that but she's very fast um, and she races with some of the top drivers so that would be a great channel to check out um, for you because I'm sure she would welcome you along especially if you're going to do more a set of course at competition in the future they have lots of community races there which I'm sure yeah. you could uh, be very competitive in and I'm sure she'd be more than more than happy for that to do but um, are there other other than Super GT and people like that other other um, uh, content creators that you would like to meet uh, and kind of, and what would you ask them if you had a chance to meet them? What I would ask them, uh, I, I don't, I don't know because I, I wouldn't really ask them anything because 
you know, there isn't really much to ask, really, because, to be honest, the, the main advice, really, is to just try and improve your videos as much as possible, and then try and keep consistent, really. There isn't really uh, much to ask, I suppose. Uh, that's it. I Sometimes when you meet the people you really want to meet, you suddenly find your questions disappear, and you think, oh... I wanted to say something and it goes, it goes from your mind. Uh, to, or that something happens to me. That's why I'm going to make sure I've got notes. That's the thing. So I know what I'm, what, know what I'm going to say. Now, here is a crazy question from the Alinsky. And he said, this is the question of the night for you. So you better consider this very, very carefully. Um, would you okay. rather fight one horse-sized duck or 100 duck-sized horses? Probably one horse-sized duck, simply because if you've got a hundred duck-sized horses, they're all there's a hundred of them, so it's obviously going to be a lot more tricky. But if there's just one, then it's going to be a lot easier. Don't get me wrong; I mean, fighting a a horse-sized duck is obviously going to be very tricky, but it's going to be easier than fighting a hundred duck-sized horses. I think. I think that's a very good answer. When I saw that question, I had to read it twice and think, is that really what you're saying? You know. <laughs> but a great question with a great answer. Now we've got some more uh questions for you. Give me two wee seconds here. Um that uh, I will go back up with it. So many comments. Um it's uh, making sure that um we get the right one here. Um no. Oh yes, um have you heard of Jack Balding? Because he's also a subscriber here. And he's uh, he's like he's twelve and he does all the go karting uh, and GT Sport um, and is is also oh, very yeah, very oh, competitive. Yeah. Not on his Discord, I think he's quite active on that. He, he's yeah. very quick. He's probably faster than myself. He's more consistent. He gets uh, the bigger points results. It's it's incredible what you can do because yeah. Obviously, I think he's on a pad as well. So there's no excuse for me really to be slower than him, but I am. Well, I suppose just a bit more practice and that'll be it. And I'm sure you'll be getting up there and giving him a, a good run for his money. Now, for for some of us older in the community who know what's been happening with poor old uh, Key 25, I do like Echo Hendricks' uh, comment there. I would love to meet the Key 25 and ask if he forgot to pay his electricity bills. Yeah, I'm quite sure from his recent comments <laughs> that might be quite appropriate. I'm sure he would love to answer that one for you. Uh, cool. <laughs> just uh, I wouldn't stand too close to him if you do, but uh, but yeah, that is definitely a very good question. Um, now here we go. Uh, uh, I've been asked, do I ever get cross? Mike Rogers thinks I never get cross. I'm sure you've seen some of my live streams when I've been wiped out or got a penalty with something I haven't done. What's been the most annoying thing for you, uh, um, uh, uh, Michelo, uh, in terms of the penalty that you've received? Uh -huh. How do you find the current system? Is it? Are you doing well with it, or is it? Are you a victim of it? Uh, I don't get many penalties, actually. To my surprise, uh, I've I've not been a victim of the penalty system. I know I know that it is pretty bad, and I know that it definitely needs work. But myself, I haven't really uh, been a victim of it too much. Yeah. I mean, I suppose it's one of these things that we do. You see them all the time on the videos. Is that somebody's, you know, they 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 get wiped out or pushed aside, and and then the person gets nothing, and then they go up to the person and they're trying to overtake them, and they make one tiny little touch, um, you know, and uh, and then they get like a two second penalty or more, um, and it can be quite. Uh, yeah, right. But uh, you know, that's that's the thing. Now I'm looking for the questions here. Um, let's see. Oh yes, now Philip Horton has asked. Um, where did your gamer tag come from? Um, and he said, I've only tried to ask that five times. I didn't see that one earlier. Uh, where did my gamer tag come from? Uh, to be honest, I, I, just, I, didn't, I couldn't think of anything. So uh, I knew that uh, Mimi was a fashion designer or like a fashion brand. And then at the time, 79 was my uh, race number. Well, obviously, it's changed now to 25. But I'll never change it. I'll never change it. Never. Yeah. 
No, it's a good, it's a good name. It's a very good name. Um, and I think that's what I quite like about the, uh, you know, the, your PSN names. You can have lots of fun with them. Um, I've got my Crichton Starbug because I was a Red Dwarf fan. You see, so that's how it all started. Um, and then my recent one is uh, Fat Man and a Cheap Sim uh, because I'm slightly overweight uh, and I have a Cheap Sim. So that's how it could all make sense. But it's it's quite a funny one. And I hope it, I hope it kind of works. That um, now, um, oh, now here we are from uh, Augustine Mellors. Is Mumu joining E Monaco or staying at NBW? Uh, I haven't got any offers from E Monaco as of yet. So uh, for the time being, I'll be staying with NVW. So you all have a teammate that's slightly competent, don't worry. But if I do get an offer, I'll have to consider a lot of things really because I only joined the team about three weeks ago. And to jump ship this early is a bit of a, I don't think it'll be right, really. So That's the thing. And here's a good question from Aiko Hendricks. Um, how did you feel when you beat Super GT for the first time at Suzuka? Uh, the, the best way to describe was euphoric because <laughs> I overtook him around the outside at the final chicane, which is very hard to do. Yes, he had Ollie on his inside, but we, come on, it's the last lap. You know, you're, you're jostling for what was 11th place. So it was it was a good race. I, I was keeping Ollie posted for the whole thing. I wouldn't let him get away. But in the little MX-5s, it's quite difficult to uh, stay on the back of someone because if you get a snap of oversteer, that's three tenths gone. Uh, so it, it was good because, to be fair, circumstances did help me because he got a penalty twice. But to be fair, I started last and he didn't. And I got held up quite a lot at the first two laps. But mm -hmm. I, I felt happy and I made a video out of it. So yeah, I'll take it. Oh, that's right. I think I remember seeing that because uh, I've watched a lot of Super GT videos and I'm sure you, I can remember mentioning your name uh, that you got past him uh, literally at the last corner. Um, so, yeah, no, that was the thing. So if he's mentioned you as well, you'll need to remind him of that. When he's on the show next week, you'll need to come on into the chat and remind him um, and uh, oh, we'll yeah. make sure that, uh, that, that he, he calls out your channel and see what we can do. He's a great guy. Um, and it's and it's fantastic that you meet him. The only time I ever got into a lobby with Super GT was at Brands Hatch, and it was a private lobby that he was doing um, on his stream. And uh, and the thing was, uh, it, 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 it was the one time I thought, great, I'm gonna have a chance to race against him. And he he, he crashed into the back of me going around the first hairpin. He just punted me off in the qualifying, and then my and then I got dumped out of the lobby. It um you know the, it uh, it went awry, and and uh, and of course it, we were all taken out of the lobby and we had to restart it all. So I never got a chance to actually race him. Um, only got a chance to be punted off by him, uh, but uh, but no, he's a good chap, and I'm looking forward to him coming on uh, the show uh, next week. But uh, now here we go. Now let's uh, let's get another question uh, by let's see a political mind. Um, uh, it's, always, it's saying my interviews are very enjoyable, which is very nice. Thank you. How many times have you beaten Super GT? Now only one time, but I do recall about uh, nine months ago. Uh, I think it was at Tokyo in race C in Group 4. I actually out-qualified him, and I was in front of him for a good three laps. And then I went for an absolute send at one of the corners. I think it was a right-hander. And then he, he, he actually mentioned me. He, he said, that guy went from fourth to first. And then all, all that happened. And eventually I got spun around, and then... Uh, I finished like 15th because I got pushed into the wall by Will Murdoch. So that wasn't very fun. Aye. No, that's, uh, that's the thing. But it's great that you, fact you can you can remember how many times you've beaten them, though, <laughs> which for most of us is certainly not the case. But, um, now, here's a question from Sean. Um, do you prefer doing live streams or making and editing videos? It depends really what I'm doing in the live stream. If I'm doing open lobbies, then of course I'll prefer to uh to do live streams. But if it's uh if it's making if it's like an FIA race or whatever, then of course I'll prefer making the videos. 
Mm -hmm. That's great. Now we've got a, a good question here. Um, how much are moderators paid? And if so, my co-hosts, who are supposed who are who are assuming that they are moderators, um, are going to get a pay rise. Um, does uh, has Ollie paid you anything for being a moderator yet? Uh, no, he hasn't paid me anything, not a penny, <laughs> which is a bit of a shame. But I mean, I've just got to kind of accept it, haven't I? <laughs> well, now is your chance. Now is your chance to say I demand a pay rise from zero to something above zero. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure you'll give it. Look at all the witnesses we have in chat. They'll definitely say you're worth a punt. Or to make sure you can get something, get get uh, an increase. But um, now we've also got a question here. Um, here we are. Um, now let's see. Um, oh, I've been asked: Are we going to do some GT Sport after the interview? We're actually going to do some. I said, of course, a competition after the interview. Uh, on, I'm going to go and do some multiplayer a bit later on. Is, is that something you? Do? I know you said you do a little bit of ACC. Do you tend to do the career, or do you do the the kind of multiplayer? What's your favourite? I did a multiplayer really, and when I first got the game, I did I think one uh, race against the AI, and I won. So that that was that was interesting. But I definitely do prefer online to single player. Yeah, yeah, no, that's the thing. Now going back to uh, GT3, we've got a question here, which I think might be designed to wind you up a bit. Is by Augustine Millers. Um, is Willow Springs in Group 3 the worst combination in the game? Well, you're not only wrong, but you're so terribly wrong that you might have to have your limbs stretched because Willow Springs is the best combination in the game, no doubt. That's a, well, seemingly, my two co-hosts have now said that, uh, that they are unionising and they're demanding a pay rise, 100% pay rise, to two jelly beans. And I was saying, yeah, that's if you're lucky. You've got to work a bit harder, you two. But, uh, <laughs> I want you to see proper moderation from now on. But, uh, now, that's the thing. Now, now, I'll get some more questions here coming in for you. Um, it's, uh, now, Nielinski has asked um, for your favourite car, or a, for a choice of cars here, um, between the four GT40, Mark 1, 2, or 3, or a four GT... 05 or 17 version? Good question. Well, GT40 Mark 1, really. Yeah, the original is worth millions. Such an iconic worth. car. Because but, obviously uh, it's got that motorsport pedigree. And the thing is, none of us would be able to fit in it. But you guys being small and young, you could you could fit in that car, no problem. Because that was the thing, it was very <laughs> short. Wasn't it? And many, I think, was it, was it one of the drivers who uh, who was uh, used to it for, for racing the car? They had to make a um, it, they had to make a slightly higher version of it just so you could actually fit in the car uh, because it's so low um, that it really literally is on the ground. But uh, now Philip Horton has asked, "Whatever happened to wanting a flake in that?" But uh, that would be an easier and a slightly cheaper uh, um, question to ask. Um, and oh, Serality has asked, "What color would you have your Ford GT40?" Well, it's obviously got to be in red, surely. Yeah, no, I Maybe think that's slightly the kind of lighter red, or almost kind of uh, orangey colour. That, that would look pretty nice on the four GT. Uh, actually, actually, I'm wrong. It's got to be the dark blue. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 quite. I have to say, I do like the new one, the one that they brought out a few years ago. I do like that. I think that looks a fantastic car. Um, and I think it was better to the kind of early one that they made, the kind of early kind of um, uh, version they did a few, back in 2005. I think that one wasn't quite as good um, as the one that they redid. But, um, so keep your questions coming for uh, um, for Moomoo79. And uh, there we are. Oh, how do you find, um, uh, in fact, Sean said this chat is being like Discord on a daily basis. Because obviously you you're use all these different systems and social platforms. Are you a big fan of Discord? Uh, yeah, it's good to interact with everyone outside of the live stream. It's very good. 
and it keeps you up to date with everything that's going on, isn't it? But uh, now that's the thing. Now we've got a very good question from Mohammed GTS saying, "What is a bucket list for GT7 that you would like to see in the game?" Uh, to be honest, I want a better penalty system. I want more tracks. I want the balance of performance, especially in the Group Four class, to be better. And I also want to see. Uh, I also want to see kind of more damage models, because if if you absolutely wreck someone at turn three in Austria, for example, you're not going to get away with anything. Yeah. So it doesn't quite work. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the thing. And uh, here's a good question from Nilinsky: Who is the biggest wind-up merchant you've ever come across? Whether it be on YouTube or Discord, who winds you up the most? Uh, I don't know really. I don't really have an answer to that question. That's all right. You seem a very laid back kind of person. It doesn't look like much. Uh, not like in terms of it take an awful lot to 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 wind you up. You seem quite focused there, which is which is very good. Um, and uh, oh, yeah, oh, oh yeah, here's a good question from Augustine Mellers. Who is worse, Momo's ninety one? Or Viggy. Uh, Viggy for sure. I mean, Momo's is bad, but Viggy is just on another level. I mean, what what he's done is questionable, and for the to, to say the least. But when you actually look at what he's what he does, it's just mind-boggling how he gets. Especially because of our striver. I mean, he wouldn't be A plus for no reason. He's got to have some element of speed. And the fact that he just drives and races so dirty just kind of annoys me because he could be very quick driving. He could be there in the highest split. But because of his own actions, he isn't. Oh, I think it's buffering out a little bit. I think it's thinking just the way there. Can you hear me there? Yeah. It's just gone a wee bit slow. It's just freezing up slightly. But um Yeah, I'm so sorry, but my phone is leaking out to the All right. Back. Not to worry. Not to worry. Well look, um we have uh, my phone is literally on, is it about uh... to die, is it? Well, not to worry, we've been going for fifty-two minutes, which has been absolutely brilliant. Um and uh, you've been a fantastic guest. I know that we've been asking you lots and lots of questions. Thank you and um, you've done incredibly well. I have to say, for such a young chap to be able to answer question after yeah, thank you. question is brilliant. Um, have you got any wee messages you would like to give the community that you know and your friends here in the sim racing community? Um, as uh, anything you would like to say to them? Uh, I can guarantee you that. Mm, that in two months time I will be in top split and I will be destroying Ollie in every single race that I'll be. <laughs> that, that's that's my uh, guarantee. That's great. Good fighting talk. That oh that will get them all wound up, I'm sure. That uh, but no, it's been fantastic to have you on the show. Thank you very much for stepping in at the last minute for guys. It's very, very kind of you to do that. Um and you're welcome on on the show at any time. I wish you all the best. For a great year in racing and getting up in the top split and getting on to the world tours, I'm sure you'll get there very soon. But um, we have a couple of mottos on the show. And the thing is, they're mottos that never work in motor racing. Um, but because we're all, we think we're a bunch of comics, we think we can get away with it. Um, and the first one is drive fast and try not to crash, which is a take on Schumacher's um, year review when he was uh, interviewed racing a number of years back. Um, and of course, our second one is win the race at the first corner which is not a good idea and <laughs> that so uh but it's been fantastic to have you on the show um and uh if you stay on the line for a few minutes once we finished oh he's gone he's gone there we are he's already gone but um i think his, his phone was about to die um but for everyone watching thank you very very much it's fantastic thanks so much for the questions the comments it's been absolutely brilliant and uh, we've got px cam racing uh, on saturday night at nine o'clock so make sure you tune in for that uh, because that would be absolutely brilliant to see you all there. Um, he's got over three and a half thousand subscribers and he's coming all the way from North America um, to, to uh, let us know exactly what it's like 
to be a, a very successful sim racer. And uh, and uh, obviously we'll be back again on Monday for our gaming stream. And I'm hoping to do some set of course of competition in a few minutes' time. So take care, drive fast, and try not to crash. And you'll win the race at the first corner. Take care and bye just now.